Right there, baby. Hey ladies and gentlemen, super excited for this upcoming hunt. My little boy Zach is not very little anymore. He's 12, but he's almost as tall as me. In fact, he's wearing shoes that are slightly bigger than mine. So this was kind of my first big game hunt to pack for him and for me. We both have cow elk tags and we're headed up to um, kind of by Winter Park, Fraser type area of uh, Colorado. But uh, I am loaded to the gills with all kinds of fun stuff. And if the elk hunting is lame, we've got some air rifles to do a little squirrel hunting. So really looking forward to it. Just picked up Zach from school. He got to miss a couple classes and he actually has tomorrow off. So tomorrow we're gonna use that for a scouting day. Cause we've hunted around this area, but never perfectly in this area. So. Gotta do a little uh, recon, see if we can figure out where the elk are at. Just waiting for all the traffic so we can get on the road. Alright guys, we are taking a different route than we normally take. Every time we go through Denver and Interstate 70, we end up getting stuck in traffic. So we're taking a scenic route. It might take a little longer, but I don't know. At least there hopefully won't be a bunch of traffic. We're gonna drive through Rocky Mountain National Park. Up and over Rocky Mountain National Park. We're heading out the back entrance and this is where that huge forest fire came through a couple years ago. We are in the public land now. Just a few miles from where we're going to camp. Looks kind of like a war zone. Let's see. Let's see what it's like when we drive around up here. Well guys, we've been driving for what, 15, 20 minutes in uh, public land and it has been solid, solidly burned. A couple other places I've been on forest fires, usually it's kind of patchy. I'm finally, finally seeing some unburned trees up there around the timber line. I mean, the food source is still fantastic. The grass is just super thick. So I have no idea if the deer and elk would hang around in here because Talk about easy road hunting, you can just drive around and you can glass pretty much everything, almost like antelope hunting up here in what used to be the forest. This is one of the, one of the reasons we came up a day early, so we can scout around and see if we want to mess with this area or not. So we'll see. Well guys, had on my tracker with Onyx, and we drove back here 10 miles from when I turned it on, and I haven't seen one patch that was not burned, and I'm still seeing another mile or two past me. Still no trees or anything like that. I've seen some marshes and some swampy areas with zero tracks. We saw one track that might be a moose track, but, um, we kind of wanted to shoot some squirrels and grouse on this trip too, so we're going to circle back around on the other side of this burn area. There's a couple of places I e-scouted that look like that's more on the edges and maybe uh, maybe we've got some forest or some wilderness area over there. That was a little thicker timber than I wanted to rifle hunt, but uh, I think I'm going to kind of rule this area out. We didn't, didn't even see one deer walking around and this is kind of prime time when deer start walking around this time of the evening. That other side of this area still burned to a crisp. We got to the edge and it was still about a mile of burn before it looked like it turned into forest and it turned into forest almost a timberline. Um, 
So we're going to go try a different spot where one of my hunting buddies got a few elk the last few years. It's lower elevation by a little bit. And I think it's going to be hopefully a little more patchy of a burn. So anyway, we've been driving 18 miles solid and it's completely burned. Like not patchy at all. Not even one patch of aspen survived. Not one patch. I think I've seen three pine trees and about two aspens that survived. Even the aspens got scorched so bad there's no leaves on them at all. We do have a little bit of three or four foot tall aspens that grew up this year pretty fast, but that's it. And still not one doe in all these meadows. So, I don't know. Pretty sad because this would be amazing territory before this fire happened. Well guys, 31 miles later in 42 minutes, came over to a different place. Texted my buddy who's hunted here last year and he said it was pretty patchy. There was plenty of green trees still left. And there are some right there. We still gotta climb a ways. Well guys, it's almost dark, but we found a really nice camp spot. We can blast some of the hills where my buddy told me they've gotten elk before. And it's got some good windbreak. And it's actually got green live trees. Garlic chicken. We're all set up and we got Zach over here finishing up some last minute homework. That's dedication. How'd you like this drive today, Zach? It was supposed to take three hours and it took about six to find a place to camp? Yep. You excited? Mm -hmm. It was good to see a live tree once we got to this spot. That's for sure. We are really roughing it tonight. Got a nice propane heater. We got snacks and we got a movie on the iPad. How'd you sleep last night, Zach? Pretty good. Good. Plenty warm. It's frost outside on everything, so it got below freezing. Mm -hmm. and a quick breakfast. The sun is about to come up just enough to where we can start glassing. The goal of today is to see if we can see if there's any elk within a mile of where we're at. And to what? Hunt squirrels. Yep. Zach's always wanted to hunt squirrels, but it's usually, we're usually in the mountains in September, which is not squirrel season, but now it is squirrel season. So we've got this nice air rifle up here. We may have squirrel stew or roast one over the fire. squirrels up in those trees right now. Zach's on it. I told you Zach was on it. Have some squirrel stew tonight. Work. There's like 60 of them over there. I know, I just heard one right over here too. It's like 20 yards from us. Nice job. Found a pretty good glassing spot for tomorrow. Some of that hill is in the range of our rifles.
He emerges from the forest victorious. Well, Zach's getting to use his very first little kill kit that I made for his backpack. He doesn't really need to use the game bags. He's processing the squirrel. What do we think, Zach? What are we having? Squirrel and rice. Squirrel and rice for lunch. Provided for the family meal tonight, didn't you? Well guys, yesterday the scouting day was a little bit frustrating. Um, we did learn a lot of that land and the area and really good glassing spots. And uh, we saw a lot of people coming in uh, the, today's opening day and a lot of people were coming in. We heard of people driving in the night. So I'm anticipating quite a few other hunters out and about. Um, last night we sat there for about three hours in this really nice glassing spot. And unfortunately we didn't see any game moving. Well guys, we went to make our turn off and two people jumped right in front of me and turned in like they floored it when they saw headlights and they got in front of us. And now we see they're about half the way where we we're gonna go and they just are starting to unload an ATV. And so, I don't know. I don't know that we should go back in there. They kind of just crowded us and claimed that spot, I guess. So maybe we'll think about something else. Hope yet, but I've got a moose walking around way over there. Just past legal shooting light, that's why it's kind of low light and kind of grainy. But he's a ways over there. As the light came up, we've noticed it's actually four moose. And not cows. With my binoculars, you can see in plain as day with the big old moose noses. Well guys, about 8.30 in the morning. It's been pretty uneventful other than our spot being taken, but um, I think it was a good thing because we found this upper road that kind of goes up here almost to Timberline actually. And it has a whole bunch of really good glassing areas and we can kind of look at this whole area. Um, we saw four moose in the very, very early morning. You could barely even make them out. It was still so dark, but you could definitely see they had that big moose shape and a huge upper chest body. They were down there. Um, and then we just spotted three deer over there, about a thousand yards away. Um, no elk action, but uh, this is first rifle season and it's only elk, and we just heard a rifle shot somewhere down in that flat. So we're just going to keep exploring, and I think we're just going to keep letting our eyes and our glassing do our walking today. There's so many hunters up here, um, I think. Right back there, we found a really good spot. There's a saddle that comes off of Elk Mountain, and I think it would be a natural shoot if they're getting chased back and forth to go from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom. And we've got a few hills in range, and then we can glass all of this. So we'll probably take this road a little ways, explore a little more, and then we'll probably just spend a few hours hanging out there um, until everybody's probably taking a lunch break or whatever. And Zach's got the right idea for a morning of just kind of glassing. He glasses, then he plays his Nintendo. And he glasses, and he plays his Nintendo. And then he yells at his dad, Find me an elk, Dad! I didn't do that. <laughs> well, we found a nice spot that's got a hill that starts at 300 yards and the top's 450. And it goes down, there's a little valley, some green stuff right there. And you can glass all that. And Zachary's passing the time shooting pine cones and if we happen to see a squirrel 
And right up here is that saddle where maybe if these hunters are pushing elk around, they might use this as a passing corridor. Good times, even though we don't see anything. Well guys, I've been here about an hour and a half, had lunch. Zach's been pestering a couple squirrels and putting some BBs out there. And we've seen some cars and trucks drive by. So we're trying to figure out, we only really have one day to hunt. Oh yeah, and we found, what's that? A chainsaw chain. Yep, and what else? Um, a really old arrow. Really old arrow, aluminum. That's where the knock would have gone and been glued on in the feathers, the veins. And then it's broken off here. We're thinking maybe it was in the shoulder of an elk or something like that. But anyway, so, the only animals we've seen are four moose and three deer all on that mountain right there. So we're going to go explore the end of the road and look at there's some trails that go and, and it's really this is our only day to hunt for this first rifle season. We can hunt tomorrow morning but there were so many people down there by where we're camped. Maybe we'll just go up here where we're actually seeing a little bit of wildlife and maybe there's an elk up there. I don't know Zach, what do you think? There's probably squirrels and grouse over there. At least we could go check those out. And shoot them. And shoot at them. Alright guys, we are going to head out for our evening hunt. It's actually only about 12.30 right now, so we're going to take our time and do a lot of squirrel and grouse hunting. That means I'm carrying two rifles, my elk rifle and the BB gun. The BB gun gets transferred if we see a squirrel. We got an old uh, shut down road. Looks like they've been doing some grading on it right there. But it shut down to road traffic. And there's only one other truck over here. Versus everywhere else we've been trying, there's been four or five, six trucks almost at every parking spot. And like I said before, this is the one mountain we've actually seen some wildlife. So we'll go see if we see some more wildlife tonight.
stopped to take a little break and turned around after a couple minutes. So I could take a little snooze. Oof, got a lot of public land hunting. Our plan to come up here where the water is and the uh, food and then the deer were up there and there's some actually some good forest right up in there. Um, it's been thought of by two other people because we were walking our way to where we were going to set up for the night and some guy was already standing up on the other side of the park letting us know he was here. So. If I'd have known that, we just stayed in the park that's like one mile that way, but oh well, public land belongs to everyone, I suppose. A little frustrating, though. Well, guys, there was uh, one guy parked here when we first got here. So, they moved in on us. Well, guys, we've seen truck after truck after truck after truck. We've heard three or four shots down in this area though tonight. So we picked one of the least congested areas to kind of park and we've got some ridges picked out at 350, 450, and the back one would be a 780 yard shot. And we're just gonna hang out here and watch the last half hour. Uh, good morning guys, it's day two. Got up a little bit earlier today. Gonna go down to the spot where we kind of got crowded out last night and see if we can kind of get there first and go up to that first meadow uh, that's right by the water source and kind of the dark timber. And we're gonna hang out there for a little bit and then we'll probably just work our way through that series of meadows as the sun starts coming up. And see if we can catch anything passing through. All right, guys, looks like our plan worked. There's nobody else in this parking lot except for one truck that was here yesterday, which means that guy must be bivy hunting back in there somewhere. Um, and we've got about 26 minutes until shooting light. Should be about perfect for us to get into that first uh, meadow. So here we go. Well guys, we're back at camp. We need to pack up pretty soon and head home because Zach's got school tomorrow. It's the first day of the second quarter, right? Seventh grade? Mm -hmm. What'd you think of this elk hunt, Zach? It was fun, but we didn't see any elk. It was fun, but we did not see any elk. What did we see? Squirrels and grouse and moose and deer yeah and we also his tag 
in Colorado you can extend your youth hunts and so we can hunt this if we want to in second, third, fourth, and even I think a late December season if we want to. Um, that's one of the reasons we wanted to come up here this weekend is kind of you know maybe get lucky and see an elk and get one but uh, really to try to learn the area because in second season you will have four tags. You will have a cow and a bull and a mule deer doe and a buck. And we did find some good areas where there were quite a few tracks, especially if you guys watched the footage and you saw where they just tilled up that old logging road. And I saw on the back of the equipment there a seed spreader. So I think they just planted seed on that to completely shut down that road. And I'd guess that only happened about the last week or two because some of the clumps of grass that were tilled up were still green and some of the little aspens that got kind of kicked over, the leaves were still on them. So I don't think it had been too long. So. There's quite a few deer tracks in that area. Um, and then as it gets colder and we start getting snow, I would expect them to kind of come down a little bit lower. And we definitely learned all the roads. Um, so sometimes late season, it's nice to just kind of drive around when it's so cold and glass and spot one and try to sneak up on it. So overall, I think it was a success. We did get meat we had a yummy meal of squirrel. And then we found a really nice grouse area that we, he got a shot at one with his BB gun, but um, it was flying, so he didn't get that one. Too bad we didn't have a shotgun or we'd have had a grouse dinner too, but we know right where the grouse are, so we might bring a 20 gauge up next time. But anyway, we're gonna sit back and finish our cup of coffee and hot chocolate and let the uh, frost melt off the camper and we'll load everything up and head home. We'll try to film a little bit more footage through Rocky Mountain National Park and maybe we'll actually see an elk in there. found the elk guys, they're in Rocky Mountain National Park. 